In this video, you will learn how to make a simple animation in a programming language called Scratch. Scratch is an easy to learn language where you drag and drop blocks of code that snap together instead of writing code in a text editor. To get started, go to scratch.mit.edu, then click Join Scratch to create an account or sign in if you already have one. After you've signed in, click the Create button to start a new program. You will see a work area in the middle where you will connect your blocks, a menu on the left with the different blocks that are available, and then in the top right, you see an area called the stage. This is where actors or characters called sprites will move around as you make your animation. Our goal is to make a simple animation where this cat sprite says something and walks across the screen. We're going to do that one block at a time. First, we need to tell the program when to start. We're going to do that using an event block. So click on events over here on the left, and then click and drag this when green flag clicked block out into the workspace. That's going to tell your program to do something when you click on this green flag up by the stage. I'm going to zoom in a bit, which you can do with the magnifying glass icon down here so you can see the code better in this video. Next, we want the cat to move forward. We're going to do that with a motion block. So click on motion up here on the left, and then click and drag the move 10 steps block out so it snaps to the bottom of the when green flag clicked block. You can see that when I get it close enough, it animates this little gray shadow box indicating that the blocks will snap together. Whereas if I have it farther away, they do not snap together. So make sure this block snaps to the bottom of the green flag block, which means that this block of code will happen after the green flag is clicked. If they are not connected, then this block of code will never happen because it is not attached to an event. Now click the green flag and watch what happens. Every time I click the green flag, the cat moves forward 10 steps. You'll notice that if you look at the move block, you can click and change this number. The default value is 10, but for example, I can change it to 100, click the green flag again, and the cat is going to move much farther. If I keep clicking, eventually the cat is going to move all the way almost off the edge of the screen. To prevent that from happening, we would like the cat to start over in the same location each time we click the green flag. We are going to do that with the go to block. So I'm going to drag this out and snap it in between my when green flag clicked and my move blocks. You'll see that this block has values I can enter for X and Y. Those correspond to the horizontal and vertical positions on the stage respectively. You can see that the current position of the sprite is displayed here in these boxes, and you can also click here and edit these to move the sprite. So I'm going to change X back to zero because zero, zero is the center of the screen. X increases positive to the right and is negative to the left of the center. Y is positive up and negative down. So if you are familiar with graphing or plotting at all and X and Y axes, that might make sense to you. If not, don't worry about it. Just remember that as the X number gets bigger, the sprite is going to move to the right. As the Y number gets bigger, the sprite is going to move up. And as that number gets smaller, and if you enter a negative number, it's going to move to the left for X and down for Y. So I am going to enter the start location that I want in this go to block. I want my sprite to start on the left side of the screen, so I'm going to enter negative 100 for X, and I'm just going to leave Y set to zero. Now I'm going to run the program and see what happens. However, when I click the green flag, we can see that we don't really see the sprite moving at all. It looks like it is just staying in one location. And that is because this code is happening so fast that we can't really see the animation. It is going to this position initially, 
but then instantly moving forward 100 steps, so we just see it in this final position where it has stopped. In order for us to actually see the animation, we would like to add a delay or have the program wait between these two blocks a little longer so we can actually see it. We are going to do that with a wait block. So go over to control here on the left and find the block that says wait one seconds, click and drag this out so it snaps in between your go to and move blocks. And like the other blocks, this has a number that you can change to something else. So I'm going to change that to two seconds. Now, when I click the green flag, we will see the cat go to its initial position, wait for two seconds, and then move forward 100 steps. However, this motion is still very jerky. The sprite sort of instantaneously jumps from one position to another, and we would like to see a smoother motion like you saw at the very beginning of the video. So to do that, we are going to replace this move block with a glide block up here under the motion menu. So you can get rid of the move block either by right clicking it and selecting delete or by dragging it back over here to the blocks menu. So I'm going to delete that block and instead I'm going to replace it with a glide block. And you see this block has three different values you can enter. You can enter a time for the number of seconds you want the motion to take, and then you can enter the final position where you want your sprite to arrive. So I am going to leave it set to one second, but I am going to set my final X value to 100, so the sprite is going to move over to the right side of the screen from its initial position on the left. Now, again, I'm going to click the green flag, and we will see what happens. So initially, the cat goes to that initial position on the left, and then it takes one second to glide over to the new position on the right. And if I change this number, if I make that bigger, it's going to take longer to get there, so it's going to move slower. And if I make that number smaller, it's going to take less time to get there, so the animation is going to be faster. Next, we're going to learn how to make our characters say things with little word bubbles. And we can do that using the say block under the looks menu. So go into the looks menu and drag out this say hello block and just put it right at the beginning of the program. You will now see that if you click the green flag to run your program, the cat gets a little word bubble that says hello. And this word bubble will move along with the cat and stay there until we have another say block that overwrites it. So for example, I'm going to use another say block at the end of the program. And just like the blocks with the numbers that you can change here, you can type in something else that you want your sprite to say. So say at the end of the program, I'm going to say goodbye instead of hello. So now when I start the program is going to say hello and then it changes to goodbye at the end of the program. Now, if you don't want those word bubbles to stay there forever and you want them to disappear after a certain amount of time, you can use the say hello for two seconds block instead of just the say hello block. So I am going to replace my hello and goodbye blocks with this say hello for two seconds block. To do that, you need to rearrange your code a bit so you have to disconnect blocks so I can just delete this say block here, collect my say, sorry, connect my say hello for two seconds block, reconnect this. So let's see what this looks like when I run it first. I haven't changed that last block yet. And you will notice that I have a problem. It's actually saying hello over there on the right before it moves over to the left. So the order of your blocks matters. If we look at the program, it's just doing these in order from top to bottom. And when the program starts, the cat is still over here on the right from the last time the program ran. So if I wanted to say hello over here on the left, I need to click and drag to rearrange the order of my blocks a bit. I need to go to the position on the left first, then I'm going to say hello, wait two more seconds, then I'm going to go over to the right, then I'm going to say goodbye. So let's click the green flag and watch that happen. I say hello over here on the left, it waits two more seconds, glides to the right, and then says goodbye. And again, I am just using a regular say block here, so that goodbye is just going to stay on screen. But if I want that goodbye bubble to disappear, 
I can delete this regular say block and replace it with this say hello for two seconds block where again I'm going to type something else there and maybe change the time so that is going to stay on screen for three seconds instead of two. Now if I run the program, you can see it does what I want, it says hello on the left, walks across the screen, and then says goodbye, and that word bubble will disappear. Next, we're going to make our sprite disappear after saying goodbye. We can do that using the hide block down here towards the bottom of the looks menu. So I'm going to drag that out and snap it to the end of my say goodbye block. And now we will see that when I run the program, the cat says hello, walks across the screen, says goodbye, and then disappears. But I have a problem if I run the program again. My sprite doesn't come back. It hid the last time I ran the program, but there is nothing at the beginning of the program telling it to show itself. So we can do that with the show block by dragging that out and snapping it here. And we see that it will now reappear on the left, run the program, disappear on the right, but every time I rerun the program, it will reappear on the left. You have now learned how to make a basic animation in Scratch. If you look over at the motion and looks block menus, you will see there are a lot of blocks that we did not explore in this video, but you can experiment with them and figure out what types of animations you can make. In two future videos in this series, which you can find linked in the description of this one, we are going to explore changing the costume for your sprite, meaning changing the sprite's appearance, which allows you to add different animation effects, and how to add new sprites that can have their own programs so you can have multiple characters interacting with each other in your animation. To find those tutorials and some science projects you can do with Scratch, check out the links in the description of this video. For over a thousand other science projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.